Well, the Crimson Tide took care of business in Spokane. Not every SEC team can say that. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. This is a special bonus episode uh, for those listening. We appreciate it. Alabama just gets a big win over the College of Charleston. Uh, let me just reiterate the final score here was 109 to 96. I mean, it was a 13-point game, and Alabama was you know, up way more than that. Everybody that played, and 12 players played for Alabama, everybody scored. Mark Sears was obviously the superstar. Um, Other folks had their moments, but overall it was just a nice big time team win at a time when at the very beginning of the game, it felt like, boy, are we going to do this again? Are we going to, after a week off, we're going to come out flat after watching Auburn get beat. You know, we're going to come out flat and UAB too. We're going to come out flat and we did come out a little flat, but then when we turned it on, Jimmy, it was a thing of beauty. Yeah, the final score was not anywhere close to representative of what that game was. I think when all the starters were in and Alabama was running its offense and the starters were in playing with let's win the game intensity, Alabama was up by 30, which is more representative of how the game went, uh, particularly in the second half. Uh, once Alabama took their foot off the accelerator and by that went to liberal substitution, uh, there was a noted uh lack of execution that happened from that point on at both ends of the floor. And uh, Charleston was able to uh, cut into that 30 point lead pretty significantly uh, because that last five minutes was just sort of a mess, but, but that it it had nothing to do with what, what the rest of the game was like. And I I think Luke 109 points, first of all, that's the all time Alabama record for points scored at an NCAA tournament game by far, because the record going into this game was 101. They crushed that by scoring 109. So, I, what, what I love to see is this Alabama team, which is the best offense, the most highest scoring Alabama team of all time, goes to the NCAA tournament and continues to set scoring records. Mm-hmm. And that's what's really cool, continuing to set offensive records. And what I'm afraid of, Luke, is we have spent this whole year understandably uh, upset or complaining about the defense, which, which hasn't been good. I'm not saying that that we were wrong to point that out. Nate Oates talked about it constantly. I get that too, but we haven't given enough credit to the team, and in particular the fact that what we watched this season was the highest scoring Alabama team of all time. And, and we just don't discuss that enough because we're too focused on what the team's not good at. Uh, but but in terms of scoring the ball, wow, wow. And Mark Sears just continues to put together one of the great seasons in the history of Alabama basketball. You know, and I'm, I'm reading some of the comments and appreciate all you guys tuning in here at 934 on a uh, Friday night. Uh, Brian Royster says, roll tide roll, but the D was atrocious. A.J. Evans says uh, they were only in it, or Charleston was only in it because they got every second chance point. Can't do that in the second round. And you know that that's the theme. I think you're right. It's it, it make that is the one thing that probably keeps this team from being so lovable. And uh, because boy, it's frustrating to watch, and it and is so glaring the way Charleston dominated us on, on the offensive boards. At least they just dominated. And I mean, it, it was like we just couldn't box out. Some of it was just bad luck when you when you take a bunch of threes like Charleston did. I mean, we did too, but we made ours. They didn't make theirs till the end. When you, uh, when you take a, a, a bunch of threes, you're going to have some long rebounds. So, you know, sometimes that can be a little deceptive, but boy, and therefore I would say from the 17 minute mark to worry about the 10 minute mark plus or minus, um, it felt like they were getting every loose ball, every offensive rebound. And I was like, Oh boy, here we go. Because we had seen a whole day of this, right? where some some teams that if you don't play the way you're supposed to play, you're going to get beat. Uh, we know one team in particular that we'll talk about here in just a second. Yeah. But I think that, um, you know, when Alabama's on, they can make up for it. 
the problem is they're not always going to be on. And, I, you know, if they play, especially St. Mary's in this next game, I don't know that they're going to be able to make up for it. we got to get some box outs. we got to get some rebounds. And, um, look, you and I said this. We are what we are. We're not, that's not – we're not going to magically become a good defensive team. We're just yeah. – we played, but I'll say this: at that about that ten minute mark, we started playing some pretty good D. Now, it was, you know, it wouldn't lock you down defense, but it was pretty doggone good. And especially when our offense is clicking, it sort of makes the D a lot better. And when the offense is clicking, even if they score, we come down and score again so fast, it's like they didn't accomplish anything. Yeah, the the final score and the fact that they scored 98 or whatever they scored, 93, I don't, I don't know, something really high, that's not representative of the defense Alabama played in this game. When when the starters and Alabama's first team in a let's go win the game group was on the floor, Alabama's defense was was actually pretty good. Now, mm-hmm. now some of the rebounding was was pretty bad. But the, the defense, while the game – look, when Alabama was up by 30, which they were at one point, up by 30, at that point in the game, the defense had played really well. Think of how many stops that is for Alabama to be up by 30 because there's so many possessions. Uh, Charleston had so many possessions, just as many as Alabama had, uh, and, and you know Alabama scored 30 more points. So the defense was actually not terrible. You can't look at the – final score that Charleston scored and think and, and, and think that. But the fact of the matter is, while Alabama was trying to win the game with their first team, the defense was actually okay, I thought, a, a, a big chunk of the night. Uh, does that mean they're going to be great Sunday against St. Mary's? Probably not. And again, I'm assuming St. Mary's beats Grand Canyon. They may not. But but gosh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later in the show. Uh, St. Mary's, if, if it is St. Mary's, what a tremendous matchup of tempo that, that is a sense of foreboding for me. I don't like it myself, <laughs> but it's going to be Alabama, the Greyhound versus St. Mary's, the tortoise. And, and we'll, we will see who wins the battle of wills <laughs> Sunday. Alabama's going to want to play fast. St. Mary's going to want to hit the brakes. Yeah, that, that, that one's definitely going to be interesting. Um, Jimmy, when we uh, come back, we're going to talk about some of the individual efforts. Do want to tell you about Fire TV, though. Y'all know I love me some Fire TV. Been telling you about it for a while. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire Stick TV that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, that some of us are still in from this state, you're going to have, want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Look, that's MLB, that's March Madness, that's NBA, not to mention great news and entertainment and gaming and traveling, cooking and all that stuff. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked out Fire TV, trust me, you should do this. Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Okay, so Mark Sears goes for 30. Um, I mean, his greatness, I mean, you know, we can wax poetic about it if you want to. He's so good at getting, and I really love the fact that the the broadcasters were kind of taken away about his quickness of getting to the, to the rack. He um, also is very strong when he gets to the bucket. He did have one shot block. That was a three pointer on a step back. And you could tell like the first thing in his head was, man, if I had just pump baked, I get him in the air and I get fouled. You could tell he, he, he saw that. Um, his mom is becoming, you know, a national treasure. Uh, everybody's enjoying watching her right now. And uh, so I hope we get to see a lot more of her. Uh, I think this team, if they keep playing like this, they can do well under his leadership. Now, the, the, I'd rather talk about some other guys that maybe didn't do quite as much as him tonight, but one is Latrell Reitzel. He was on pace to do what Mark Sears was doing. That guy is a sharpshooting fool right now. And, um, you know, the only thing that's stopping him is injuries. And he's one of those guys. Look, I got a daughter right now. We're going to the Bahamas next week for spring break. And my daughter in Ohio – 
this year alone, she has had a concussion playing soccer. She fractured her back playing soccer. She just got well from that. And the other day, two days ago, she got a high ankle sprain that uh, is like really bad. They thought it was broken, but they x-rayed it. They said, we don't think anything's broken and we don't think you've torn anything. So you can go to the Bahamas. But um, so it's, I mean, it's just brutal. And sometimes it's not anything she does. She's a good athlete. Sometimes you're just injury prone and it's not anything you do. It's just, it's bad luck. I mean, it just sort of surrounds you. And I hope Wright's a live in that way because boy, if he is on fire, like he's been in the rest of this tournament, we can go a long way, Jimmy. He's a great, great player. What I, what I love most about Reitzel is, you know, obviously the team's not very good on defense at all, uh, but Reitzel is. I mean, Reitzel can D up a little bit. He's, he's probably our second best perimeter defender. Uh, he's a great shooter. Uh, he can score at the basket. Uh, every now and then he takes a mid-range, which causes Nate Oates to have an aneurysm, and those are always uh, hilarious. Uh, but, but I like uh, Reitzel's intensity. Uh, and again, they, that he plays both ends of the floor. Uh, I hope he comes back and is on the team next year. Uh, I really, I really do. He's got one more year of eligibility. Obviously, he's not a great NBA prospect. Uh, my hope is that he comes back and plays an even bigger role next season. Uh, but you started out with Mark Sears. And again, one of the things I'm going to do on BOL when the season's over, I'm going to take a look back whenever the season's over. Hopefully, it won't end on Sunday. Uh, but when the season is over, I'm going to look back and rank Mark Sears' season against other individual seasons at Alabama and, and see, you know, where, where we think it ends up ranking, but it, it's going to be high. Who knows? It may be number one, uh, I, but it, it's going to be way up there. One of the great individual seasons ever at Alabama basketball. It's Mark Sears. Let's talk about how wrong I was before the year started when I said, if Alabama has a great season, it's going to be because Grant Nelson and Rylan Griffin Battle it out for who's the best player on this team. I, I, that that's as wrong as I've ever been because it was Sears. And hey, not that anybody else was saying, "Hey, watch out, Sears will be the best player in the league." No one else was saying that either. But wow, what a, what a great great player! Not super on defense. Maybe Mark Sears is so emblematic of the team in that way. Big time scorer, one of the great seasons ever. Eh, not so good on defense. You know. Um... That, that so Reitzel, yeah, I'm with you. I hope he and Sears both come back. I think if they come back, that may be the deadliest one two punch in the country, honestly, shooting wise. Now, I mean, to, like you said, to fit, I'll tell you this Reitzel on defense, I thought played really well when he was out there tonight. Yeah. Um, he, he might be the best of any of the Alabama defenders. Uh, somebody, one of the comments, uh, brought up something, and I'm gonna try and find it. Uh, Alabama, here it is from Gary Davis. Alabama was up 95 to 64 when we took our starters out. The backups were outscored 32 to 14. So, I mean, that, that again, don't hold that against the team. Don't say anything. Well, it got close at the end. No, that, don't do that. Um, one other thing that one other po big time positive I want to bring up was Estrada. Yeah. Okay. Estrada was just not hitting it. He just wasn't hitting his shot in the first half. He just wouldn't. In fact, I don't know if he scored in the first half. Um, but he ended up with 13, and in the second half, he muscled his way in a few times. He had a beautiful spin move. Um, he had some nice passing. He played great defense. Let me just guess how many rebounds he had. Aaron Estrada. Yeah. Seven. Dang, Jimmy, you're so good. Yeah. Guess how many assists he had. Five. Eight. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty yeah. good. I mean, you know, it's just it, – yeah. Somebody in the comments, and I'm not going to go back and find it, but they said, you know, he's sort of a glue guy. I don't know if the if glue guy is right because I think if he had been a true glue guy, that would be also an emotional leader in terms not, of. He's also not a great defender, you know, like Sears. I mean, Reitzel and Griffin are pretty good perimeter defenders, and Sears and and uh, and, and Estrada are not. Estrada at his best, Luke, and he, he was at his best. I think it's particularly in the second half. He's a stat sheet filler. Oh, he's a stat sheet filler because he scores, he passes, and he rebounds. He almost he got just, triple double. Yeah, and and, and I, he did earlier this year, right? Yeah, uh, and, and he he is a good player, and he's one of the reasons. Hey, look, that starting five, the starting five that started tonight, the four guards plus Grant Nelson, uh, who who by the way was sort of a. I really thought Grant would have a big game going into tonight. He did not. Of, he, of all, we got all the, we got nothing from him. We got yeah, and, and I expected a big game from him, but in general, 
Those five guys, Sears, Reitzel, Griffin, Estrada, and Grant Nelson, good players. And, and hey, now Alabama's what I would call certified. And by that, I mean, okay, it's officially certified. One of the top 32 teams in the country this year. They really are. They were seeded to get there. They won their way here, uh, scoring 109 points. Absolutely one of the 32 best teams with an opportunity to prove they're actually one of the 16 best teams. And the way I'm looking at it, Luke, others may, may look at it differently, but this is what I think Alabama is playing for Sunday. Uh, you play and you lose, and you're like, you know, that was a pretty good season. They set all sorts of records. Sears was great. They made it to the final 32. Uh, a little disappointing that they came up one game short of the Sweet 16, but that was a good year, pretty good year right there. Or you win Sunday, and it's a phenomenal year, no matter what happens in L.A., phenomenal year for Alabama to follow up last year's Sweet 16 with another Sweet 16 with a completely rebuilt lineup and rebuilt coaching staff. Phenomenal. So yeah. that's what I'm excited about Sunday. You, you're, you've you either done pretty good or phenomenal. I would say at this point, you've exceeded expectations regardless. Um, Not that people didn't expect this to make the NCAAs, but you know, nobody. I don't think a lot of people thought we'd be right in the mix of that of the SEC title towards the end. I don't, right. you know, and yeah, we we petered out in the SEC tournament. But it turns out winning the SEC tournament doesn't do a whole heck of a lot for you either. Um, so didn't seem and to. we're gonna go ahead. Didn't seem to. No, I said didn't seem to. Mississippi well, State played pretty good in the SEC tournament. Didn't help them out either. Yeah, you're right. So Florida uh, also beat Alabama. Guess what? Okay. Home, they lost. It's gave up 102. Two. Gave up 102. It was um it was an interesting day for the SEC. Danny Cannell is smiling wherever he is. I'm sure he's smiling from down in hell because <laughs> I'm not a, Danny Cannell makes me so mad with his anti-SEC stuff. But Jimmy, I need to tell everybody about LinkedIn. All right, of course, I'm going to tell you about LinkedIn. You want to hear about LinkedIn because you love LinkedIn. You're like me, you just love it. It's awesome when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals faster and for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals that uh, you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all this while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions, yeah, you, you can, yeah, they're going to apply. Probably, yeah, I think so. Okay, boy, the SEC now Tennessee's moved on, Alabama's moved on, and AM's moved on. And it's kind of bizarre because Alabama and AM, I mean, AM put up 98. That's pretty ridiculous for them. Um, in an 8 9 game. In an 8 9 game. They're going to, and they're going to end up playing Houston. Houston's taking care of Longwood right now. <laughs> uh, Longwood. But um, so I, the only three SEC teams move on into the round of 32. That, yes, it's shocking. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in hindsight now, and it's especially shocking to me, is in my bracket, I had every SEC team winning their first round game because I'm an SEC homer. Um, but I'll tell you, some of these games, like we talked about Mississippi State getting blown out yesterday, that they looked overwhelmed. Um, Florida losing today, look, you could tell that injury to the, injury. Uh, yeah. the kid they lost, that hurt them a lot. And they, boy, Jimmy, that game was great because they hit a long three to tie it, and then Colorado hits a shot. If the shot just swishes, Florida's probably got three seconds left. But the shot sort of rattles around. You don't know if it's going in. And it, it took another second off the clock, which hurt Florida big time. And then they shot it a little bit too early anyway. But, uh, but of course, the talk uh, outside of Kentucky losing, which was just eye-opening, and Calipari might be out of there, is, of course, Auburn losing to Yale. And, um, boy, <laughs> Uh, that was something. I did not see that coming. I, I'll tell you the truth, Jimmy. I have no problem saying this. I, you know, I have my Final Four tickets. I'm going to, to Phoenix because my son goes to Arizona State. And mm -hmm. that was my Christmas present to him that I'm going to take him to the Final Four. And um, 
I was scared to death Auburn was going to be there the way they've been playing. I really was. I was like, this, it'll be, I'll look like that girl. Remember that girl at the LSU game that CBS panned on when Alabama was kicking? And she was one of my favorite memes of all time. Yeah. One of my favorite um, memes of all time. It's awesome. And, but anyway, uh, they got beat and, you know, Yale, they just couldn't stop Yale. And they had um, some, just some big time problems. I mean, that Chad Baker Mazzara just, I mean, look, say what you want to. He, yeah, did the guy probably prod him into it by pushing him a little bit beforehand? Yes. Did he punch him in the throat, which is essentially what Bruce Pearl said? No, he did not do that. And no, you cannot elbow somebody right in front of the referee like he did. He just blatantly elbowed the heck out of him running down the court. And so it, it's a, it, it really threw Auburn off, I thought. But, um, boy, I was happy to see it. Yeah, I'm not sure it should have been a flagrant two myself. I probably would have been okay with a flagrant flagrant one there. But on the other hand, it was a flagrant foul. And and you shouldn't ever commit a flagrant foul, even in retaliation, in a big game because we can see what happened. But instead of just, you know, piling on Auburn, which is fun, by the way, but instead of piling on Auburn, I think it's just a good reminder of how well Alabama did. That was Mm -hmm. a 13-4 game, too. I mean, they're both in 13-4 games. Auburn didn't get it done against the 13. Alabama led a 13 seed by 30. I mean, Alabama showed up and uh, and Auburn didn't. I mean, that that's not a team that should beat Auburn ever. If they played 20 times, maybe Yale should win once. And today was that once. And uh, just uh, an outrage. And, and hey, remember when Auburn made the Final Four run, right? And, and, and that's what made Bruce Pearl's time at Auburn so – what it is didn't they early on i think maybe round one they were fortunate to win against maybe new mexico state new mexico or, state and who was coached by chris jans okay they and they were fortunate to win the game right you just wonder about how bruce pearl's whole tenure is looked at at auburn if they didn't if he didn't win that game against new mexico state because in the ncaa tournament outside of that final four run bruce pearl has had Zero success at Auburn, really, uh, other than – and I say other than the Final – I'm not trying to discredit the Final Four run because who they had to beat to get there, the the Blue Bloods they had to beat, impressive as heck. But they almost lost to New Mexico State in that first game. And, uh, boy, Bruce Pearl's whole tenure will be looked at differently. That was a really good veteran Auburn team to, to, to lose to Yale, just a – a really bad loss for the league. And and I'm upset about the league because I kind of bragged on the SEC during the season. I think the SEC tried to say, hey, we're the second best league behind the Big 12. That looks kind of hollow, you know, the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. To say, hey, we're the second best league behind the Big 12. I don't know who is, but just not a good showing at all. But uh, we'll see. Maybe Alabama, Tennessee, and Texas A&M, all, if they all make it to the Sweet 16, maybe we have a little different song to sing about the SEC because at that point, the SEC would be uh, what six six and five, you know, well, which is yeah. a pretty good record. You know, and a, a friend of mine, they were they were on a text chain with some Auburn friends of mine, and uh, my brother's on that text chain, and um, one of one of my, you know, my brother, we started sending some tweets about Auburn after they got beat, and I was like, look, I'm sending these knowing full well that this could come back to bite me if Alabama loses Charleston, but my brother was a little bit more merciless, and. Um, he so one of the guys said, "Hey, you should have plenty of rest. Y'all had a day trip to Nashville last week." And my brother said, "That's a lot better than a day trip to Spokane." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, that's a good point." But you know, you you bring up a great point uh, because the other thing was my, my Auburn friend said, "You know, well, Auburn, I mean, Alabama's so used to going out of the tournament early." And it and I thought I didn't respond to it because I know that you can be sort of irrational when your team loses because I can too. Um, but, you know, outside of the Final Four year, Nate Oates has been to more Sweet 16s than Bruce Pearl. In, in per- Pearl's time at Auburn and, Al- and Nate Oates' time at Alabama. And Pearl's been at Auburn a lot longer. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Nate Oates, and if he goes to Sweet 16 this year, I think Bruce Pearl's only been to the Sweet 16 once with Auburn in that Final Four year. And this will be Nate Oates' so. third time. Um, now, correct. would I love to get to the Final Four? You're dang right I would. And I think we'll get there under Nate Oates. I really do. I believe that. Hey, I love the fact that Nate Oates went into the Yale locker room to congratulate him afterwards. <laughs> and again, you can, I know Auburn fans probably hate that and say it's classless or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's what makes the basketball rivalry 
get up right. there with football. And one curveball that, or one part of that that everyone's just going to sail past because they love the scandal and the blood. Nate Oates and the Yale coach are personal friends. They've yeah. known each other a long time. That's why Nate would, Nate didn't go in there because uh, y'all beat Auburn. I think that's so cool. He's personal friends with the Yale head coach and hugged the coach actually outside the locker room because they've known each other a long time. That that's what that was about. That that wasn't. Now everybody's going to make it about the rivalry because that's what's fun and that's what fans okay. do. But that that really wasn't Nate's uh, intention. I'm fine if he they weren't friends though. I mean, I, think <laughs> I mean, look. Okay. Uh, Bruce Pearl and Nate have sort of, you know, they've taken their little jabs each uh, time uh, yeah. with each other, and so be it. I mean, you know, Bruce Pearl actually threw a headset down at Alabama one time. He was so mad about the officiating, but I mean, name a game he's not a mad about the officiating. Um, yeah. So uh, I would say that, uh, you know, this rivalry is getting better, and look, and, and it's up there with the best of them right now, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And look, I'm still proud of the state of Alabama. I'm still proud that four of our teams went. It sucks that Sanford kind of got hosed on a blocked, on a missed call mm -hmm. or a call that shouldn't have been made. It UAB put up a heck of a fight. I also have no problem saying I really wasn't cheering for UAB. I mean, I, you know, I it's just not my bag, and uh, I definitely wasn't cheering for Auburn. So um, I, I was definitely pulling for Sanford because I love Bucky McMillan. But um, regardless, Alabama moves on. We don't know the time yet, right, Jimmy, for the next game. Uh I don't know the time. Uh, there might be a timeout by now. Uh, could be uh, since we've been on the air. But uh, I, I know I don't know a time. I'm going to assume a little later in the day. That that's just a guess. Also, think it's funny because of Auburn's loss to Yale, probably delivered San Diego State to the Sweet 16 again. The same yeah. San Diego State team that beat Alabama in the Sweet 16 probably sails in. They'll have the matchup with Yale, <laughs> and uh, I like San Diego State and the Aztecs get back-to-back -back Sweet 16s. And I don't care that their path was a little easier. It's hard to do. I mean, for people that just Ooh, discredit man. those achievements, if it was so easy, everybody would do it. If it was so easy as to have a good draw, then then all these mid-majors would do it all the time. And that's just not, not the case. Back-to-back uh, -back Sweet 16s, very impressive for the Aztecs. And barring some, you know, commitments or something that were to happen tomorrow, and Luke Metz is going to commit, I think, Sunday it's afternoon. Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday, yeah. So, um, but at, just looking at Saturday's lineup very quickly, you know, Dayton, Arizona, that's mildly interesting to me just because yeah. there's a former Alabama player on Arizona and there's a former Alabama coach coaching Dayton. Uh, Gonzaga, Kansas could be fun. Uh, North Carolina, Michigan State should be interesting because hopefully Alabama will play the winner of that game. Um, Iowa State, Washington State, Oakland, NC State. Yeah. All right. I'm usually a guy that dislikes two higher seeded teams playing each other or lower seeded teams, however you want to look at it. Big number teams playing against each other in the second round. That one does intrigue me. And then Texas, Tennessee is definitely fun. So, wow. um, and Creighton, Oregon, isn't Dana, isn't Dana Allman, didn't he used to coach Creighton? Yes. And Alabama played both teams during That's the right. year. Alabama defeated Oregon, Alabama, in a game that everyone's forgotten. You know why? Didn't we play Oregon the same day the football team played Auburn? <laughs> Great grave digger day. Was that the same day? Same day. Yeah. Same day. Because yeah, I'm sure it is. Okay. Yeah. And I, I know it was the same weekend. And I and I think we lost yeah. to Ohio State on the Friday night, right? We lost to Ohio State on the Friday night, but beat Oregon on that Saturday. And uh the game that nobody saw because Alabama fans were yeah. so obviously in tune to the football game against Auburn that day. But that was a nice win over Oregon that no one talked about during the offseason. And Oregon ends up not only making the NCAA tournament, but advancing. And now Oregon with a chance against uh, Creighton, a team that Alabama played to and lost in a fairly tight game on the road. So a lot of Alabama ties here and uh, shows what kind of a schedule strength Alabama plays year in, year out. One of the reasons Alabama is so good. We, we got to hang it up, but I, I want to say this. I talked to an Auburn friend of mine that's got some connections yesterday, right? And especially connections with like former players. And I was, we talked about Chris Davis and uh, just like, I said, what is he doing? He said, well, I mean, I think he's making a boatload of money just signing memorabilia right now, like a lot of money. Now, he told me a figure that was a little bit shocking to me that, but, and I won't say it because I mean, I don't, I don't, I can't back it up. But it got me to thinking 
that, you know, even if <laughs> that's how good players have it right now, even if you don't make it in the pros, you can make a living just signing helmets for people, it, it sounds like. And again, if the money's what he told me, oh, he's making a beyond a living. He's doing great. Now, will it last forever? Because eventually, you know, you you sat for money. everybody. But, <laughs> you know, it did make me think, boy, Isaiah Bond, if he goes to Texas and he just doesn't do much, see if he had stayed at Alabama and doesn't do anything the rest of his career mm-hmm. and doesn't make it in the pros, he could still make money every year if he just had grave digger signings. And it – it just, I heard Alabama. It, I heard that was Alabama's pitch to Bond. One of the pitches to get him to stay was trying to make him understand that 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 he's a legendary in Alabama forever, and when he walks out the door, that's gone. And, and it is, what, and that's what happened. And and it 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 all goes to Milro now. Now maybe it should have gone to Milro with the awesome pass anyway. But I'm saying any of that grave digger. If if Isaiah Bond were to come back and say, "Hey, you, I'll sign your helmet for ten dollars." And sign it grave digger to Luke Robinson. I'll be like, no, I'll get Milro to do it. Thank you very much, Mr. Longhorn. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly right. Hey, Chris Davis, by the way, coaches high school football at a Birmingham area school. And I can't believe I can't remember which one it is because Chris Davis was an assistant Anona. coach. Yeah, for some some kid that we uh signed. Did we sign a kid from uh a from Winona? That's not where Jeremiah Beeman's from, right? No, he's from Parker. Right. He's from Barter. Maybe Chris Davis co- – oh, I thought you were asking where Chris Davis played. Didn't he play at Winona? I don't know. I don't know. Who I just know he is a coach. He's a coach in the Birmingham area, and he coaches someone that committed to Alabama in the last class. I just can't remember which which one it is. Maybe he's a Clay Chalkville. Uh, I'll look I, it up. I can't remember. Yeah, we'll look it up. But, no, he, got, he does coach high school football in addition right. to signing his kick six memorabilia. When CBS started – the NCAA tournament on CBS. I watched, I wanted to watch the first few minutes, the 11 o'clock game on Thursday. I want to watch the beginning of the tournament. And then when they're showing famous sports on CBS, there's the kick six again. Always. And I'm like, what? Can't the Grave Digger play sort of replace? The Grave Digger plays pretty good. Fourth and 31? I mean, eh, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, let's uh, – hey, look, kids born in 2020 – no, kids born in 2014 don't even know about the case. They weren't alive for it. That's right. But, all right. That's, That's right. A bunch, bunch of nine-year-olds going, what the H-E-double-L hockey, hockey sticks? Show me something recent like a grave digger, baby. Um, all right. Yeah. Let's go do it for today's podcast. We'll be back uh, sometime uh, very shortly. And until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.